Seraph, the first melee carry. Wait, what? Okay, I mean the first real melee carry to actually play like a carry. And honestly, I was pretty skeptical, but I've enjoyed Seraph and she does feel like a carry to me. Her abilities are great for initiation, but also provide her with the option to escape or negate any damage. But before we look at all of that, let's take a look at the build. Now Serath can play in both the safe lane and the off lane. I typically played her in these two lanes quite a lot, so I'll provide both the builds in the description below. With Serath in the safe lane, I take a health potion, vampiric elixir, and a cast token. You can take a mana potion if you want, but I found she doesn't necessarily need it. Next, I have two cheap adamant edges with two minor casts and a lesser health, followed by an expensive adamant edge with three major strikes. Assassin's Ward is our next item with three minor strikes. Spear of the Rift Hunter is the next with three wounds, followed by a Void Seal Dagger with three major strikes. We have a Thirst Fang for our lifesteal with three drains, followed by a Thunder Cleaver with three minor kinetic, and finally our Blade of Agora with three minor strikes. I really like having Thunder Cleaver on Serath because her basic attacks do so much damage, and now any cleave damage we do is buffed by 50%, as well as the active on Thunder Cleaver really chunking away at enemies in a fight. Now the build is quite squishy like a lot of the other carries in Paragon. We will rely on our abilities and positioning as well as lifesteal to keep us alive. You'll see in the footage that I only die twice in this particular game and it's because of stupid mistakes like lazy backing. You want to start with your health potion, vampiric elixir and cast token, followed by your ward and then maxing that out. Don't be afraid to do some damage in the early game because you're incredibly strong. I like to focus on the chastise ability for the slow effect because it keeps enemies within range of your deadly autos. Deciding whether you want to upgrade your Q or E next is up to you, but I would definitely focus on your left mouse button first. Once you've completed your ward, you can then take your adamant edges and max those out. Next, I like to take my thunder cleaver, maxing that out and then moving on to your spear of the rift hunter. After your spear of the rift hunter is complete, get that blade of agora, maxing that out for the all important crit bonus. You can then sell your cheap adamant edges for your void steel dagger and the more expensive adamant edge or you might choose to get your lifesteal. Either way, after your Blade of Agora, you can build more damage or lifesteal in the order you want. I won't go over the offlane build order because that is on agora.gg, but if you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Seraph being a melee carry, you want to approach engagements differently to how you would if you were a ranged carry. You have to be within a close range to deal damage with your autos, and with this build you will crit for 700 and your abilities will do an insane amount of damage as well. I try to engage only with my ascend ability when I know I won't have to use it to escape, but ideally you want to save it for escaping. You can use it to also dodge abilities and damage like a steel ultimate. Heaven's Fury is another great ability because you could also use this to negate damage and CC effects. If timed correctly, you can dodge abilities that would punish you and it's a great counter to CC. If you're a carry and you get hit by CC, you're probably dead and Serath is the only carry with an ability that allows her to become CC immune. Heaven's Fury also does a great amount of damage which is a bonus. Remember, you'll only become CC and damage immune once you're channeling the ability. The ultimate speaks for itself, but I'm still going to speak for it. It's a great way to reduce incoming damage while also increasing your outgoing damage. Also indirectly buffs your allies because the weakness effect from the ultimate reduces enemy damage by 90% of the normal amount for 3 seconds. So hitting as many targets while in your ultimate is definitely going to help you win team fights. I pretty much mess up in this clip, but I want to point out something. The enemy Sarah jumps in and ults me. This makes it easy for me to kill her. She has no escape now and I just use ascend to run down the debuff she applied to me from her ultimate. I pop my ult, mess up a bit but I eventually secure the kill. So look to use your ascend to run down the debuff timer or completely dodge it. And I actually think in a 1v1 situation whoever pops their ult last wins a Serath because the first Serath ults and that reduces your damage but then once you use your ult on them, it reduces their damage, so you negate most of their damage and your ult will be still going while theirs would have run out. Serath is great at cleaning up or punishing those players out of position. Chimera has used his ultimate on my Narbash and he is now the perfect target. You'll notice I back up and wait for them to come to me. This means I don't have to use my ascend to engage, meaning I could escape if needed. I get into the middle, saving Narbash by popping my ultimate, reducing the damage that enemies do. I pop my Heaven's Fury 
Kyrie then ascend right to Chimera and finish him off. This whole thing was set up because I was patient, letting them come to me. Unlike a ranged carry, you can't really go in and poke from a distance. Serath really has to commit 100% and you want to make sure that when you commit, you're going to win. Because I'm me, I of course get caught while pushing their tier 2 tower. I try to use Heaven's Fury to make myself CC immune but I don't get it off in time. Thankfully, I can use Ascend to escape but the enemies are still chasing and a steel ultimate comes crashing down. I use my Heaven's Fury to ignore the howitzer slow and steel charge and then manage to ascend again. The whole point is that if you can keep your cool while under pressure, Serath has the abilities to get out from even the trickiest of situations. Speaking of abilities, did you know that every single one of Serath's abilities benefit from lifesteal? That's the reason I have Vampiric Elixir in my deck. I also think it might be worth getting lifesteal earlier based on this fact, and in some games I do. A great way to boost your lifesteal is to grab the red buff and use your abilities. You'll get lifesteal based on the increased damage, which is pretty insane. And if you think that was insane, Serath's Heaven's Fury ability will also crit and it could crit every single target and it also scales of how much power you have. So if you have a load of power with crit, you can crit 1k on every target and get life back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I plan on doing a building guide on Serath for each lane and possibly even the jungle because I believe she is so versatile. But I know you guys wanted to get a build into your hands as soon as possible so I thought I'd show you the one I had the most success with. If you enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button. Also, please do subscribe to my second channel here if you want to see some of my other videos. I'm going to typically upload other games that I do play. I haven't uploaded yet, but I plan to in the near future and your support would mean a lot to me. And until next time guys, I'll see you soon.